there was 50 million active content creators. They called 2 million professionals, which may, means they earn six figures or more per year, mm. which would tell us that there's millions earning five figures on the long mm. tail and thousands or, or t- hundreds of thousands probably earning millions. Those dollars are also only attributed kind of to creator economy revenue sources, meaning YouTube ad revenue, brand partnerships, maybe affiliates. They're not really considering that it gets a little bit murky when you realize all kinds of business owners and small business owners and real estate agents and loan officers are becoming, they're joining the creator economy. But what they discovered was that this is the fastest growing small business type. And that's a wild quote. And everybody who requotes it, they always say it's one of. The way the market map wrote it said it's no the fastest. The fastest growing small business type. Small business type. Oh, the people. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So more than opening up a coffee shop or a Subway franchise or getting (laughs) licensed to be a freelance CPA Mm -hmm. or something for people, people are becoming creators and making a living doing it or earning extra income doing it. And so what they When we think about creator, are we saying... Are we predominantly saying YouTube creator? That that would speak across the board. Instagram, TikTok, podcasters. Mm-hmm. There was a report done by The Tilt that calls them content entrepreneurs. And, and then it gets into, it could be artists selling their stuff on Etsy or any of the different products you'd sell on Etsy. Podcasters, business podcasters, people in entertainment, um, video, all the different modalities of content creation. And when they also say the creator economy, you could, you could study a whole bunch of articles on creator economy startups. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of venture capital going into creator economy startups. Welcome to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast, where we find dope people that did dope stuff. Today is no different, man. Goodness gracious. We have the man that saved my YouTube channel. I'm not even just saying that because you're here. And I think I've told you multiple times, my YouTube channel was on a heavy decline. I was at one point making, um, I think I peaked at like 35,000 on YouTube. And then it was a consistent 25. And then it went to like 22, then like 17. And then 15, then like 12, then 11. Then I saw it say like nine one day and I'm terrified. So I'm like looking all over the place. Like how, like something's wrong. Something's wrong. And um, I came to your event, Grow With Video. And uh, literally it was three things you taught, which I, I'm sure we'll get into, um, that really changed the game for me. So I got to say thank you, man. Sean Kim, how are you? Man, I appreciate you. Thanks for having me on and uh, just absolutely grateful. Man, let's go. Man, I'm here for it. So, so, so tell me like some of your, some of your like accolades in terms of like YouTube, what you've been able to build for those that don't know. Yeah. 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 I mean, I guess accolades wise, uh, I think we're over 200 million views. Maybe it's 500 million. Um, I think it's 3 million subscribers across channels. I uh, started a channel years ago in like the church leadership space, Think International. We have video influencers, Think Media, a personal channel, Clear Vision Media, Think Media Podcast. These aren't all active, but those are all just, it's just how long I've been in the game. A lot of pain, a lot of mistakes. (laughs) And so where some of the wisdoms come from was doing it so much. And then I've also, I spent a lot of time um, as a videographer and YouTube strategist for a lot of authors and speakers businesses and churches building up their social media and YouTube presence. So you hear about the 10,000 hour rule. I think I'm something like 50,000 hours in video and YouTube and digital strategy. And then, you know, now we built a eight figure company, 23 W2 employees. Um, Mm. The book YouTube secrets just came out on second edition and is um, 80,000 copies sold. (sighs) So it's the number one best-selling YouTube strategy book in the world. So it's really resonated with people and it works. You know, we talk about the seven C's of YouTube success in there. Um, And, uh, you know, I've had a couple viral videos and also um, pumped because now through team and systems, we're also experiencing a lot of success across platforms by repurposing content and really just embracing video. I'm a big YouTube guy, but I'm a video guy, you know, and and I love podcasting, but video podcasting, I really think is, is the future. And so... Yeah, we've been up to a few things and I kind of feel like we're still just getting started. I love it. So 
dang, I, I had mad questions in the stuff that you said. Vi- so I'm going to tackle the one that I just heard, video podcasting. Are you saying a podcast on YouTube or is there something else you're talking about? No, I'm saying a podcast on YouTube. A couple of things that's fascinating is there was a leaked document from Google that was 65 pages or something about their podcasting plans. They hired yeah. an executive to focus on podcasting. You can go to youtube.com forward slash podcast right now, which is not much, but it's kind of just a page of the video podcast on YouTube. And they've even invested somewhere, something like a half a million dollars into audio podcasts to say, hey, would you start recording? Like Joe Rogan, would you start reco- recording and not just do audio? Um, and so the integration into YouTube channels, I believe of audio podcasts, like it'll probably be an RSS feed, but also the movement towards um, Joe Rogan's a great model, you know, is kind of that, yes, it's an audio podcast, long form conversation, but they turn some cameras on. I mean, and just like you. So, so I think Spotify is embracing video as well. And uh, a lot of people want to consume video. And what they also said is they're going to probably make when you do your closed screen on your phone, they'll make it free to listen to the audio. Because right now, if you're not mm. YouTube premium, they shut that down. Yeah. They wouldn't be able to compete with Apple and Spotify in that regard. So um, ultimately, there's the winds uh, of change are kind of blowing towards not just audio, but video podcast. And then there's the whole strategic side. YouTube's a search engine. Discoverability of podcasts can be a challenge. You're trying to collab with other people. Yeah, for sure. You hope someone goes back in your library. You kind of need to send traffic from somewhere else. Yeah. SEO is not really a thing. YouTube gives you a whole nother stack of opportunities for discoverability, whether that's search or even just having an episode or a clip more likely yeah. um, blow up because a certain moment from your podcast leads to getting discovered. Yeah. And then people kind of find you and can go deep. Let me ask you, why do you think I had, so at first, did really, really good on video. And then I started leaning, and this may cause to, this may be a reason why my YouTube started to kind of um, decline, because I started leaning into the audio, because I'm just a big believer in the audio, like, because you can listen to audio, and that's where a lot of the ads are coming into, like these corporations, they send a lot of ad deals for the audio experience. Maybe because if someone's like, if someone's listening to your podcast, they didn't like stumble on that. They actually went into the app, found you, hit follow. They decide to listen, right? But I, I my, my, my audio continued to grow, but my, my video declined. Do you think my video declined because I was pushing audio more? Um, I think there could be a lot of factors. I think, um, you know, we just actually had a discussion with our team and now we have a couple really great creative minds on our podcast and our YouTube channel. We were actually talking about Lewis Howes. Are you familiar with Lewis oh, Howes? I love Lewis. School of Greatness. Yeah. Like his YouTube channel is blowing up. Do you know what his deal was? He just got a deal. Uh, with like a Spotify or something like yeah. that? Yeah, I'm not sure. But but what we were, the the conversation I wanted to initiate was what does he do different between his YouTube channel and his audio channel. And there's big differences. His audio channel, you kind of have the opportunity to maybe have the hook at the beginning. You maybe have a couple ad spots. Mm-hmm. You know, you have that conversation. It's unpacking. Um, you maybe define who the guest is. You go through all that kind of stuff. So we watched one of his videos with Alex from OZ, right? And, and the beginning of the video is just into it. It's a really broad appeal question. He had, you know, Grant Cardone on and he's like, He's like, so how do people, you know, protect their wealth in recession? Boom, right into it. No intro grant, no, no sponsor spots, no anything else. And it just gets straight into the content. So I think this, I know this can be overwhelming for someone who's like just starting or thinking about, man, it's hard enough to just sit down and record a podcast. Now I'm recording <laughs> different audio, different video. Yeah. But I think you really want to contextualize it for the platform. I think that we're you got to think a little bit different about YouTube, at least a little bit different, mm-hmm. if not kind of have a different approach um, in terms. So we're already thinking about like trimming a lot of the fluff out of our video podcast. Mm. Same episodes. And we're already desynced in terms of the numbers, you know, meaning we're on like episode 155 of our audio po- podcast and we're on 300 of our YouTube channel because yeah. there's clips and there's other things happening. And are you trying to so if you're kind of having the core content the same, I think the nuance, the people who are really going to win are going to apply the different nuances to YouTube is maybe trimmed down. Maybe the brand spot isn't there. It gets right into it. Um, you know, the even the title might be a little bit different because yeah. you are still trying to get that click-through rate. 
versus yeah. on the audio podcast, people are just bought in, like you said. Mm-hmm. They're just like they're subscribed. That's part of their RSS feed. They love they there's some trust there. The the audience retention, a lot of people make it 80%, 90% into it because they're working out. Yeah, for like sure. they're, you know, they're doing chores. Like they're just kind of listening. YouTube's sort of a different game. And I think you don't have to go as extreme as I just said, but I think even just a small attention to detail and the nuances of the platform could be the difference to making YouTube really work for you. Wow. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm always on YouTube and I'm looking for podcast conversation, video conversation. And believe it or not, there's not a lot of good stuff online. That's why I'm really excited about this conversation. And I think there are a lot of people are going to appreciate it wow, someone's really getting into nuts and bolts, like your multiple channels, right? So I think we just launched a second channel. It's not doing well just yet. You know, it's just not, I mean, it's not, obviously it's going to, you know, take some time, but give me the psychology behind having multiple channels. Yeah. So at this point, again, a lot of those other channels were projects, lessons. Mm -hmm. Uh, Right now it's Think Media and our Think Media podcast channel. I do think if you have the resources, there may be something about having um, a separate channel for your video podcast. And that was what we originally kind of started it for was it was our podcast channel. It also was because the other channel already had a promise to it. And this is the way you should be thinking. So Think Media mainly teaches what camera should I buy for YouTube? What's the best camera for YouTube? How do I set up my lighting? How do I set up my audio and lots of nuances, video editing software, a little bit of YouTube tips and strategy. So the expectation there, heavy tech, you know, heavy tech reviews, tech tutorials. So we figured if we're launching a video podcast, that's about kind of YouTube marketing and business strategy, even more when it comes to YouTube, does that really fit the tone of the room? You know, does that meet the dress code of Mm. of Think Media? Mm. And that was that's the original way we thought no it doesn't plus we want to start fresh and we want to also build up diversify our audience and get people who are truly passionate um you know one of the experts on our team omar al takori he's like the top ranking guy for video podcasts he has like 20 video podcast videos on youtube and Mm. he talks about it also is audience expectation think media had been expecting camera videos camera tutorials and if all of a sudden we start hitting them with 30, 45 minute episodes about not exactly what they want, again, we sort of violated the trust for which they subscribed for. Mm. We could force it and they could choose not to watch it, but we didn't want to work up the channel in that regard. So once we start the vi- we literally also have podcasts in the title. So the second channel is called Think Media Podcast. Not everyone is going to make an association of what that means, but many will. They'll go, okay, so this isn't trying to just be right to it, hyper edited, entertaining. This is longer form conversations. And so that was the original reasoning for starting it. And then it also gave us a place for where our shows would live. We don't really have shows on Think Media. It's answering specific questions, reviewing specific products, teaching specific skills. Whereas what, what evolved on our podcast channel was not just our weekly podcast, but Heather Torres on the team started the YouTube Made Simple show. And I started the Coffee with Cannell show, which don't go on podcasts. They're just live stream shows. Right. Um, and then what really gets interesting is how we slice and dice all this stuff and just post it wherever. So what we'll, we might do a great, uh, I, I did a recent episode on like courage on YouTube mm-hmm. secrets. It's the first C. Mm-hmm. And, and the podcast version is like 18 minutes. Well, if you really want to make a great YouTube video out of that, you could probably get it down to 11, maybe nine with a good editor. Mm-hmm. And because I'm not greeting the podcast, I'm not saying welcome back. I'm not saying leave a review of the book, trim all that out. So what's interesting is there's like the podcast episode recorded, but we almost can use that same asset now, turn it into a think media version, strip all call to actions out, get straight to the point and we'll get, you know, 11,000, 10,000 views on the podcast. We'll get 55,000 on think media. And that's where we're at because that Mm. momentum is a bigger channel, but like, the level this holiday, we're gonna uh, upload like our best of. We'll upload like mm-hmm. five. Ep- we'll upload a, you know Lewis Howes and Evan Carmichael. Their best performing videos are two to three hours long, mm. and so I'm excited because in going into Christmas week, which Christmas hits on a weekend this year, but going into like the holidays, everyone's shut down. We'll have five scheduled uploads, all repurposed content, and one of the videos we'll upload on Think Media, since that's technically five. Over the weekend total? 
We actually will go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Christmas, gotcha. I think, is Saturday and uh, uh, or Christmas Eve is Saturday. Christmas is Sunday. But like, call it that week. Everyone's shut down right, that right, week. Right. No one's uploading that week. We'll upload five videos. But they'll all have been edited probably like weeks earlier. And they will be what we call content marathons. And one of those, we'll just take like our five best video podcast episodes, stitch them all together, throw some, what, what a lot of times Omar and Heather will put on like Christmas sweat, sweaters and like host a mm-hmm. telethon. You'd think like, would anyone want to watch this? Like, well, people, they're at home, they don't want to hang out with their family. Mm-hmm. Like, Uncle Larry's weird, dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and so they go in their room, they're like, no one's uploading. Like, <laughs> everyone's on Christmas break. And they're right. like, oh, cool, think media. Like, I'm going to turn this on. And, and so what's wild is actually those typically perform really well. But well, I'm sorry, when you say five videos, are you saying like super long videos? Yeah, like I mean, how long? The podcast is 25 minutes long times five. It'll be a two hour content marathon. Oh, so you're saying, oh, goodness gracious. So you're saying five two hour videos every day. Yeah. I mean, uh, one, yeah. well, yeah, there'll be one two hour video every day for like five days. Yeah. So, so what we did a couple of years ago and it crushed, we did, uh, we do office tours. Mm-hmm. So, cause we all work from home. So it's like Omar's office tour, Heather's office tour, Sean's office tour, three separate videos. During the holidays, we stitch them all together. Same uploads on YouTube, all stitched together. That did better than they did individually. And, and then <sighs> we host them. So there's like some strategy to it. There's like a hook like, hey, are you looking for some inspiration for your office? You're going to see different styles. And you have, you know, you got literally different styles. You have, you know, kind of, uh, it's not really like shabby chic, but that's just the word that comes to mind for like, Heather, you kind of have that female, whatever. So, and then we time code it out. People can skip around. And you know, the average view duration of this is only like 12 minutes of the hour and 10 minutes that the video is. But 12 minutes is like triple the average on YouTube. Like the yeah. average view duration of a video on YouTube is around four to five minutes. So if you're holding people's attention as they skip through this video for 12, YouTube rewards that video like crazy. A lot of times we'll get 20 to 30 to 40,000 views on a video. I think that video got 125,000 views. And we really just, we've done all this work during the year. We just yeah. put them into buckets basically. So we combined um, office tour videos. You could combine interviews. You could, and we also think about like, and our, we just group things like microphones, like the ultimate microphone video. And, and the fact is there's shotgun microphones, there's USB microphones, right. podcast microphones. But so maybe taking all the ones you already did, already did and just putting them together. That right there, man, was worth people showing up for the podcast today. I mean, that's... Yo, yo, somebody take all of like the women and like, let's put something together, like all of the women and then like all of the financial experts. Just remind me that we're going to do that. Okay. And Seriously, by the way, send me a text of that, actually. And that's what that's what Lewis will do is he'll group because he has such a backlog of interviews. He'll group his interviews into topics. It's up. So he'll go like, you know, seven wealth building tips, you know, for getting rich or something like that. And he'll put he's had Robert Kiyosaki on mm-hmm. and like, you know, someone else about money mindset. And so he'll he'll cluster those things together. So, of course, the strategy working it happens on the other side of pump, publishing a lot of great content. But I would advocate heavily that people are not repurposing and reusing anywhere near enough and not very intelligently because these, this content is assets. And, and the myth is people go, yeah, well, what if someone's like in the comments and they go, you already uploaded this, you know, or someone complains and says, you know, man, you're just getting repetitive on the channel. And it's like, one, I have seen that comment twice. Two, it was two comments on a 22,000 viewed video with 2,000 <laughs> likes. Three, Ricky is living in his mom's basement. <laughs> Dude, don't watch the video, bro. If you already saw it, like, it's going to be okay. Like, this is, think about, and where we got the Unbelievable, term, content bro. marathon was, you know, once you take that show like The Walking Dead or something, yeah. like any show, Simpsons, like they do marathons. Yeah. So the shows have already come out, but you can watch them all in one, you know, sequence uh, all together. And guess what your ch- option is? Oh, I already watched them. I don't want to watch the marathon. Mm. Like it's going to be all right, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but the other fact is people are also just discovering it or they, or repetition is the father of learning and the mother of mastery. It's like, I want to watch it again. And there's so much noise in the world 
um, and online and there's so much competition, people also forget. So they don't even know they've watched it before. That's a fact. And so, yeah, this is a really slept on strategy um, because uh, I think you can get a lot more longevity out of your content. And with all the new subscribers you're getting, if you combine you know, some of your best stuff, then the new upload may do better than it previously did. Yeah, goodness gracious. All right, listen, every single week, every episode, you hear me talking about the morningmeetup.com. It's the community. Let me show you what's happening here. Every single morning, Monday through Friday, there's 400 plus people on a Zoom call, right? We're learning, we're talking, we're growing together, and this is you. There's all these people here. It's all these people in the morning meetup. Hundreds of people reading books, growing. We get together quarterly. It's amazing. And for some reason, you just keep looking at, just go to themorningmeetup.com and get in the circle. And then you'll be like way happier. Just themorningmeetup.com. Let's get back to the episode. All right. So I want to, for because I know the people that are like your brand new content creators and like it's blowing your mind because we're going to figure out how you got to be this YouTube king in this space to understand it all. But I do have to touch on one thing. You saw Mr. Beast, he got offered a billion dollars for his portfolio, but he turned it down yeah. had the audacity to say, I want 10 billion. Yes. Who does he think he is? And his answer will probably be Mr. Beast. What is your thought? on this like give, give me just your whole conversation around oh i think he's absolutely right i don't think yeah. that i don't think it was audacity yeah i think he it is was, mr beast i don't even think it was overconfidence i think that was humility yeah. it's probably worth more than 10 million <laughs> 10 billion <laughs> for, sure. for sure i think that was definitely worth i mean like i i think he's understand what his catalogs were i don't know what the terms of the deal was yeah. too because i also is it just like his back catalog no it probably was you know, when you get bought out, they, they buy you yeah. usually for a couple of years and you have to keep things going. So, um, yeah, no, I mean, I think it was, I think what it, what's cool about it is it is actually a lot of people feel like as small creators, they feel, and they look at a Mr. Beast that there's this huge, massive gap, but that was a win for the entire creator economy, Hundred percent. whether you're just starting or whether you have more influence. I think it just shows how much pull and weight and Mr. Beast is paving the way yeah. for creators to, to be able to say, no, do you understand? We're, we are the ones that actually have the influence right now. Yeah. Like macro influencer marketing and micro influencer marketing, channels with around 5,000 subscribers or followers is a better ROI for advertising dollars than banner than banner ads than billboards than television commercials mm. and so uh, the world is still asleep i think to the creator economy and to influencers and to content entrepreneurs yeah so yeah i think uh i think that that kind of headline is just a good thing to actually show the kind of depth that creators like you are building yeah. and i think that a lot of creators are still undervalued valuing themselves while most oh, maybe yeah. have the mindset to take it and of course i mean Respective of, I'd have taken it. Yeah, yeah, for but, sure. What, but you know what? I don't know if I'd have taken it if I'm where he is right now because it's not like he's any short of money. Like if somebody's gonna offer you a billion dollars, you probably have you have something substantial. And again, he might be a little bit short of money. Like the way he runs his business is he runs it on the bleeding edge, you know. And he's been very articulate about this. What do you mean? He just reinvests everything, every dollar for dollar. And they, they, they're so pedal to the metal. They're like always running out of money. I mean, the levels of studio he's building, the levels of production. I think even when you break down the Squid Game video, I think it lost money. By the time you even had the brand deal and the AdSense, it cost like three, four million to make the video. And it made like three. I think that video maybe lost a million dollars. Of course, do your own research, but he really <sighs> broke down all those numbers. So, yeah, hold on, bro. Hold on. You said he's spending three to four million dollars to make videos. That Squid Game video was like four million or something like that. Yeah, people spend that on movies. Yeah. I mean, he had, he had, he had 20 editors and CGI graphics and all that. And that video was extraordinary. Now, I didn't see it. I need to go see it. Now, if you go, but then you go the long tail and his whole catalog pumps out so much cash. Yeah. And his videos keep making money. And you also, that video also will keep making money. It'll probably be ROI positive um, eventually. Yeah, for sure. You know, that kind of thing. But all that to say is uh, there's also, as kind of a, a side note, there's these companies that are paying YouTubers for their back catalogs, like Spotter. And I know Mr. Beast works with some of those companies. Mm. 
And so they essentially not not anything going forward, but they 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 give you a one lump sum of money for your content from the past until now for like a three year contract. But some but com- these companies are paying like million dollar checks or multi million dollar checks. Oh, and just wow. smaller creators will pay like a hundred grand to and maybe your catalog's not that big. So one of my friends is like a yoga creator. And they got offered, I don't know if they signed it, but they got offered like 80K and they were not even super active. They just had this back library of videos. And what 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 Spotter is doing is they are then going to bypass the YouTube ad uh, revenue system and run their own ads with their own CPM that they're going to sell at their own terms. And they're taking a level of risk and obviously they got to win. So they yeah. clearly think they're going to make more than they're paying you. But the point of it is upfront camp capital. My friend Anthony O'Neill and I were talking all about this. And he was saying, I've been getting offered this and that for my back catalog. And my question to him was, well, do you need the money? Because, and Mr. Beast has done this. I'm not sure the exact details, mm-hmm. but his mentality is get cash, reinvest scale yeah. and, and keep pushing it right to that bleeding line as opposed to, um, he's not trying to exit. He's super young. Yeah. I think he's single. <laughs> he's outside. Yeah, he's not trying. <laughs> he's probably, he's like, it's, he's like 10 is what I would take now. Yeah. I'm taking this thing to 100 billion. I think he wants to, he wants to build the next album. He wants to be a trillion dollar company or something. I mean, his, so that's his level of thinking, but all that to say is knowing your worth, thinking about what's your catalog worth. No one's offering me any money for my back catalog. You actually, you could, uh, I, you, you may not have hit their radar, but uh, there's like right. three or four different, five different competitors. I probably wouldn't recommend doing it right. because if you're able to generate cash, it's, it's a risk. Of course, they're hoping they win. They yeah. might lose, sure. but over three years time, and then it's, what do you plan on doing in three years' time in terms of how that activates your back catalog? Yeah, I don't always want to go to the club, but I want somebody to invite me. Yeah. I don't I don't ever go, but I want the invitation. I want somebody to try to, because then it's cool content. Somebody offer me some money for my back catalog. Yeah. Somebody offer you money from your back catalog? Uh, we talked about it at uh, VidCon. Yeah, VidCon. This mm. year I spoke at VidCon. That's when I met those guys. Mm. And and so, I, but I haven't really pursued it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got some okay. business cards and stuff, and we should talk and yeah. all this kind of stuff. And and I mean, I think it's worth considering. But again, future is forward. It's yeah. like kind of how much self confidence do you have yeah. or belief in what where your brand will go in the future? For sure, for sure. This creator economy, man. I want you to kind of like dig into that, um, because like I go to the high schools, and maybe years ago I would go to the schools and I say, "Hey, what do you want to do? I'm gonna be an attorney. I'm gonna be this and be that." And now, even more than sports, which used to be a lot of sports, it's like, I want to be a YouTuber. Yeah. So they're joining this creator economy. What exactly is this creator economy opposed to some other co- economy? Like, what's yeah. it compared to? Well, Signal, Signal Fire did a creator economy market map, which revealed that there, at the time, and I'm sure these numbers are higher, that there was 50 million active content creators they called 2 million professionals, which may, means they earn six figures or more per year, mm. which would tell us that there's millions earning five figures on the long mm. tail and thousands or, or t- hundreds of thousands probably earning millions. Those dollars are also only attributed kind of to creator economy revenue sources, meaning YouTube ad revenue, brand partnerships, maybe affiliates. They're not really considering that it gets a little bit murky when you realize all kinds of business owners and small business owners and real estate agents and loan officers are becoming, they're joining the creator economy. But what they discovered was that this is the fastest growing small business type. And that's a wild quote. And everybody who requotes it, they always say it's one of. The way the market map wrote it said it's no the fastest. The fastest growing Small business type. Small business type. Oh, the people. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So more than opening up a coffee shop or a Subway franchise or getting <laughs> licensed to be a freelance CPA mm-hmm. or something for people, people are becoming creators and making a living doing it or earning extra income doing it. And so what when they When we also, think about creator, are we saying, are we predominantly saying YouTube creator? That, that would speak across the board. Instagram, TikTok, podcasters. Mm-hmm. There was a report done by The Tilt that calls them content entrepreneurs. And, and then it gets into, it could be artists selling their stuff on Etsy or any of the different products you'd sell on Etsy, podcasters, business podcasters, people in entertainment, 
um, video, all the different modalities of content creation. And when they also say the creator economy, you could, you could study a whole bunch of articles on creator economy startups. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of venture capital going into creator economy startups. And so the, the evaluation of the entire creator economy, I'm not sure Forbes did this. They said at the beginning of 2022 was valued at around 20 billion. And by the end of the year, it was estimated to be an $104 billion industry. I actually think that's 5X growth in one year, by the way. And I actually think mm. that that's not attributing what people are earning. It's attributing what the ecosystem of companies is evaluated at. Those companies include Adobe, um, you know, Premiere, yeah. Software, Photoshop. It includes things like Patreon. Yeah. That is a SaaS product that allows as it take 5% from the creator um, when people donate to support them in the community. So kind of like PayPal or anything else, it's these arbitrage businesses of they get that 5% on all those donations that runs their whole company, of whatever other ways they can monetize. Carrot is a credit card spelled with a K for creators. Um, and they give you your credit line somewhat predicated off your follower amount. Wow. Because maybe banks don't understand the creator economy, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they're going to give you more and they try to give you preferable terms or whatever. And so Media Kits was a recent startup and that was making it easy for, uh, you know, and then there's some p premium for creators to gather all their social following and pitch brands. Mm -hmm. And so it could be uh, nuanced software. VidIQ would be a creator economy right, 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 uh, right. software company. So all of those companies, uh, coffee was spelled with a K, another donation platform and all kinds of SaaS products. So the creator economy, to answer your question in a long way, was what do they mean by economy? It's its own ecosystem. Yeah. It's all the businesses and the creators that pay those businesses because the tools are unique things they need yeah. for what they're doing um, and just the whole ecosystem in and of itself. You know, people, uh, an economy of someone who eats food and employs the restaurant owner and is, employs the staff yeah, working yeah. at the restaurant, the creator economy has become its own ecosystem and it's evolving like crazy. So you, I, of course, love YouTube and specialize in YouTube, but I really believe this next decade is going to be the best decade in YouTube, but in the creator economy, period. And some people think like, oh, it's too saturated, it's too crowded. That's not true at all. Like, again, all these micro influencers, niche communities, all this stuff. The dollars are flowing here. The attention is flowing 100%. here. Brands are paying attention to the influence that small and large mom bloggers and mom YouTubers yeah. have. Um, and, and then those individuals have got more money, more problems as well. Mm. They're looking for unique tax services and CPAs and lines of credit yeah. and, and business structures and software and all kinds of stuff. And I mean, it's kind of yeah. your... Look, we're, we're sitting in the Creators Clubhouse. It's mean, <laughs> the creator economy, man. Yes, you have like yes, a physical sir. location. <laughs> that, I mean, so it's a whole new era. It's exciting to be yeah. part of. I want to, oh, yeah, is this mic slowly falling? Was it a little bit? Y'all, like, that's like falling slowly, ever so slowly. Somebody's going to fix it. Don't worry about I it. Got you. You're a guest. Um, I got you. Uh, <laughs> he works out daily, so. We got to fix that joint. All right, so. Um, the uh, um, where we are in this creator economy, everyone's creating content. I want to know how to grow. Some people have a voice, they have a message, they have something in their heart that they want to get out. How do you grow it though? You have a ch let's say no one knows who Sean is. Yes. Um, you have zero subscribers. You're setting up your channel right now. You're trying to get your 1,000, 4,000 hours. How would, how would you grow from the beginning? Yeah, so my method is not the only method, but I'm a, um, I'm a realist. I'm a visionary and a realist. Mm -hmm. I've got big vision, but I also really like practicality. So I like to discern the most practical path to success. Okay. And in my opinion, the first thing is to say, what is it you want to happen? Do you want to become a famous entertainer or comedian um, or talking head about just general topics, that's tough. Yeah. I don't think that's that practical. I wouldn't talk someone out of it, but I think that how do you grow? You be incredibly charismatic. You have incredible points of view or the way you talk about things. Um, you 
are Justin Bieber and you sing and play guitar on YouTube and you get discovered. Um, it is hard to coach musicians because they say, man, how do I crack the code on YouTube? And I was like, well, I don't know how good your music is <laughs> because yeah. again, you're going to, you're going to be hitting up against the lid. If like that, that's obviously, that is the thing that yeah. is the product is ultimately got to be your music and do people care and can yeah. you grow an audience? Even all the best tactics in the world can't necessarily help you. So kind of laying that as a foundation, what I recommend people do is take a practical path um, and actually kind of lean more into education. There's really two big niches. There's entertainment or education. If you lean into education, I actually think things get easy because- all Really you over entertainment? Oh my gosh. I think so. Uh, and, 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 and again, what do you want to happen? Do you want to be able to quit your nine to five? I think you go into education. Do you want to be able to get an extra couple grand coming in a, a month? You go into education. Not only that, do you want to build that up over the next one to 10 years? It's also more sustainable because no matter how good of a musician you are, you're hot this year, but a lot of one hit wonders out of there, yeah. out there, you know, a consistent career in entertainment is a whole art form in and of itself. Whereas when you just solve a problem, which I would, you, you don't even have to call it education. You call it entrepreneurship. Yeah. Entrepreneurs solve problems for a profit. So that's a bar. Who do you serve? Who are you helping? And what problem do you solve for them? So I would pick, I would run, say run it, run it back. Run, run, run it back. Who are you helping? Yeah. And what problem do you solve? What problem are you solving? You so, said something else. You said it really cool just a second ago. I already forgot. Okay. But you know. Proceed. <laughs> <laughs> so so it's like, you might say, and typically you're going to help who you were a year ago or who you were five years ago. Mm. So you might say, okay, I'm a mom. Now I'm a single mom with five kids and I'm, I've been figuring this thing out though. I'm flourishing. Life's not easy at all. Yeah. And it's a, it's a struggle for sure. But I've, I've figured out some systems and some things the way I do it, my process. And I know there's other, there's a lot of other moms out there. So who do you help? Now it's maybe where it gets really interesting is if you niche down or niche down into age, you know, millennial moms versus, you know, ba like baby boomers trying to connect with their grandkids yeah. who very much demographic based can be ways that you can resonate with people. But then what do you solve? Because for baby boomers, you might say, okay, I'm a baby boomer. I, I really know how to DJ my retirement and yeah. save on taxes. I'm going to talk about advice just hard one advice because I study and I read all day long. So the framework we created, again, you're saying, how do we grow? I wouldn't yeah. go to the tactics first. I go to strategy first, yep. you know, and the strategy would be answering if you drew three circles and in the first one, you wrote passion. The second one, you won't wrote proficiency. And in the third one, you wrote profit. It's an intersection of those three circles, passion, proficiency and, and profit. Profit. Okay. And so if we break them down, passion would be okay. So what am I passionate about? Well, I'm passionate about motherhood. I'm passionate about entrepreneurship. I read books all day long about, I'm passionate about marketing. I'm passionate about what's, what, even in education, I think you could tap into um, commentary on culture. I'm passionate about, mm. like there's this, there's this uh, I'm passionate about music. Like, so, mm. so I think about like Anthony Napolitano, like he reviews these huge YouTuber reviewing albums. A lot of people listen to him. But again, he's not creating music. He's, he's, he's passionate about that. What are you also proficient at? Well, if you have a background in music and you understand the nuances of it and you're obsessed with it, your proficiency is typically what, what keeps you fascinated. Mm -hmm. what, what could you instantly maybe talk about 50 topics? You could come up with your next 50 video ideas. What um, do you like to study? If you walked into a bookstore, what section would you be drawn to? Right. And, that, and, then, and then what do you have some experience in? And the cool thing, if someone's just starting, oh, I'm not an expert. You don't have to be an expert. You just have to be one step ahead. So mm. if you're passionate about real estate and maybe creating autonomy because agents don't necessarily have a cap on their income and you've been studying it, but you're also only one year in, well, then you're 12 months ahead of people that are just getting started. You probably sure. learned a lot in that first year. Sure. So, so you're passionate about it. There's some proficiency there. And I think there's, and to your point, it's like, People, if you just have some sort of curiosity, you're probably going to study more than the people that's been in for the last 15 years. Like, oh, this is happening. I'm curious about it. I'm brand new, but hey, guys, this is what I learned. This is what I researched. 
Tell me what you think. Coming from a curiosity standpoint. Curiosity is essential because if you're not curious, you'll burn out. Listen, if I was going to teach you how to make a million dollars, would you give me 10000 Like if I had a course teach you how to make a million dollars and you're po- positive, you're going to make a million dollars, would you give me 10000 Of course you would. It's no-brainer, right? So in a calendar year, we make seven figures with the podcast. But there's 21 things that I extracted from that that you're going to need to launch a podcast. But I only got time to give you three right now. One is you need a distribution platform. The distribution platform is what you upload your podcast to. That platform sends it to Spotify, Apple, Google Play, so that your supporters can actually listen to your podcast. You're also going to need a microphone. You need a really good microphone so it's crispy audio. And three, you need an income strategy. This is not necessarily a hobby, unless you're going to make it a hobby. But I can teach you how I made the seven figures with these 21 things. Now, the good news is you don't have to give me 10,000. My ebook is only 37 bucks, okay? So listen, go to podcastebook.com and get the 21 things that you need. And I I can explain it in detail, all the things that you need, okay? Podcastebook.com. Let's get to the episode. And and so I think about like, it's getting a lot of hate right now, but Amazon released this Lord of the Rings show, you know? And uh, a lot of people don't like it. My wife's into it. It's all right, but we're, we're, (laughs) We're enjoying it. But one of the things that I realized, I do this after every movie, every show. I pretty much always go to YouTube and I say ending explained. I'll go, you know. Really? So, and especially, we watched like Lord of the Rings episode one on Amazon Prime. I was like, I don't know what the heck is happening in here. Like, <laughs> and so I went to YouTube after it's done. You know, this is like, it's almost like bonus features on a DVD or a Blu-ray, yeah. you know? And I watched a 30 minute video. I watched every second. And my God, like the level of detail. <laughs> so some guy is breaking down. He's got clips and pictures from the books. And he's talking about history and he's framing things up. It's enriching the show. To, by the way, a lot of times I, w- I sometimes didn't even like a movie. And once I actually watch and they're like, look at these angles, look at this storyline, look at this motif that mm. was in the movie. I'm like, well, I didn't see that at all. But I mean, I, and so so that's what's oh, exciting. That's heavy about that is, is I honestly, I, I do like m- movies and media, but personally that would not keep me, I'd be too bored if I had to watch movies and media all day long. Flick Connection, this dude's making a full-time living, getting sponsored by Athletic Greens. My wife and I just yesterday watched the best new movies coming to, oh, uh, you know, Netflix in October. And we watched the whole thing. So watch time. And he's using... I'm only texting because I have a, I, a really, really good idea. And I cannot forget it because you just sparked something amazing. Uh, okay, I'll tell you guys. I'll tell you guys. But I'm still going to write it down. Actually, Joe just texted to me. So, okay. So it's like I do these interviews, right? An hour, hour and a half, right? I just need to create another channel and maybe even hire somebody to do the reviews of the podcast episodes that's like an hour, and they do like a 15-minute review of all these episodes. But not only just mine, but all of these interviews Mm. of entrepreneurs who are into that thing that don't want to watch the two hours. They just take it, clip it up. That's going to be another channel. Well, and 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 that's what's what's exciting about that. Again, that. It doesn't just have to be when you go passion, proficiency, and then profit. It, it is again what keeps you super curious. Mm-hmm. Like if you absolutely love learning and digesting entrepreneurship, and, and we live in a world where you can make a good living as a content DJ, mm-hmm. as one who curates. Uh, you know, my friend Evan Carmichael, his entire channel is like Oprah's fifty rules to success, Gary Vee's ten rules to success. Um, and their compilations, fair use, it is clips, other people, OPC. What's fair use? Uh, fair use law is, means that you can do this legally, um, because you're combining multiple different sources into an original work. OPC, not OPP, naughty by nature, (laughs) OPC, other people's content. Right. Um, and you can use other people's content legally if you're on camera, you're the DJ. And so Flick Connection He's playing all kinds of clips. Like he's not, he doesn't have light kits and gaff. He's not making all this stuff, but he's just talking in a room. But the video is very interesting because he's showing you the trailers and the clips. And I'm watching the Lord of the Rings summary and it's a rich media experience. This guy didn't create the media, but he DJed it. And he, and, and he obviously is obsessed enough. I don't want to go read 10,000 pages of J.R. Tolkien, all the niche books and research the things and figure it yeah. out. He did that. So if you are passionate and it keeps you curious, you can monetize that passion. And then profit would be, how am I going to make money at this? Mm-hmm. So how do I grow? That goes back to, you know, 
if you pick the right thing that's based on your passion and you do have some proficiency at it, then you also pick the right business model. Now, maybe the ambition isn't a particular amount of money, but if it is and you want all three of the Ps, then you would choose the vehicle. You might say, man, I can't decide between these three passions. Well, then you ask, which one are you strongest at? And then you ask, which one will get you to your financial goals? So maybe you're like, well, if I start this real estate channel, I do love it. I think I could be into it for the next five years. I was just talking to my friend Levi from living in Dallas. And he was saying, he called it affiliate marketing. Mm-hmm. He was like, I have the best, most lucrative high ticket affiliate marketing program ever. He's an agent in Dallas. His YouTube channel attracted a million dollar buyer. That's a $30,000 commission. Mm. And I was like, shoot, dog. You know, I mean, three bucks on Amazon. <laughs> right. I was like, you know, at $30,000, that's how much we make an entire month in Amazon right, right. last month. I was like, that is a better affiliate program than, you know, Damn, Amazon. Uh, hold on. You do 30000 a month on Amazon? Yeah, we do like twenty five. Word? Yeah, we've had a, almost 41 months. Because you're reviewing cameras and stuff. At and there's scale. A... Yeah, at, at uh, a big scale. And we're, we're good at things. <laughs> Yo! Yo, because someone... I don't even have an affiliate link, I don't think. Can you set me <laughs> one up? Amazon? Yeah, Amazon. Can y'all show us how to do it? Yeah. Because I think we tried to do it a little while ago. You, you should spin off the channel. You could make 500 videos about just this place. And you just keep talking about how you're doing what you're doing here. Which is a whole nother thing. Like... The model for so many people is do the thing and teach the thing. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, the real estate agent is, he, he has two different channels too. So he's got living in Dallas, which is attracting buyers and sellers. And he's got his whole team and it's deal flow. And then he started a channel helping other real estate agents that they should be using YouTube. So do the thing and teach the thing. And so, you know, yeah. What are you, what are you passionate about? What are you proficient at? And then what could be profitable? And we, if we go all the way back to talking about education, you know, one of the most profitable things, uh, industries is creating an online course or educational materials, you know, by 2025 Forbes predicted, and now it's higher. That's going to be a billion dollar a day industry Mm. a day. That's 365 billion a year. And those numbers are going up now because the pandemic changed everything. Those came out before, um, you know, C19. And so ultimately, um, if you're in education, because no one's really going to buy an online course if you're entertaining. But if you if you were, by the way, back to the musician thing, what That's I tell real. musicians is I say, they say, how do I get discovered? How do I get my song out there? If, they're, if they've got the chops and the skills and they're super passionate, curious, proficient, I say what you should do is teach how to build your home studio because you already spent 30 grand, 50 grand on your studio monitors and your mixer mm-hmm. and all your different stuff and your mics. And if you know how to use Fruity Loops or Mm -hmm. whatever these different softwares are, and you know how, and you even are familiar with how to upload your song to Spotify and all these other things, you might not make it as an artist. Like, no disrespect. I mean, it's so competitive. But you put out a channel like that, and not only a couple things happen. I think maybe it already would be a tax write-off for your equipment, maybe. Mm -hmm. But now, like, you could write off all the gear you're using. You've started a separate small business. You can affiliate for all that kind of stuff. You can be someone who's helping you do the thing, but you're also teaching the thing and teaching the thing is going to be more lucrative. 25,000 a month from Amazon affiliates. Yeah. Not including the revenue from YouTube, not including ad like sponsors. This is not including our other affiliate programs. What do you mean? I mean, vidIQ, Epidemic Sound, (sighs) Rev.com, Adobe Premiere software. That is a real strat. Oh, no. Okay. All right. Let me, let me, let me step that up. Okay. I got to step up that end. I, 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 in terms of g- growth, back to the growth, right? So we're, we're teaching this stuff and I'm a big believer that you have to be good at it. What makes you guys good at it? Cause it's not just reviewing a camera. It's not just talking about houses, right? It's, mm. You have to be good at it. What yeah. makes you good, but also how does someone get good at this? Yeah. You got to do the freaking work. Yeah. You got to put the time in. So, you know, kind of taking a page from this book, Outliers, you got to practice, but people miss a piece. It's, it's deliberate practice. So 
the 10,000 hour rule came from Malcolm, Gla- Malcolm Gladwell's book, Outliers. Yeah. And it was that there's been 10,000 hours. People who reach mastery have invested 10,000 hours. But it's not 10,000 hours showing up with apathy. It's not 10,000 hours passively listening to YouTube videos, thinking they're going to stick, but you're not even really paying attention. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between the person who is shopping online for clothes they can't afford while they're listening to your show, Mm -hmm. while they're kind of distracted and texting back and forth and fighting with their girlfriend. And the person who turns on your show, puts it up on their desk, shuts out all distractions gets a big old thing of water so they stay hydrated, gets a big old thing of coffee so they're locked in, opens up a journal and takes notes as you're teaching through your show. That's two different people. Mm. That's a whole different level of of deliberate practice. And so then you there's a difference between someone who, again, showed up and was kind of apathetic at the video shoot and the person who obsesses over the angles and and studying and learning. And so, you know, as as the founder of Think Media. Maybe you think I'm doing too much. You know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe you think I'm doing too much. And I just, I'm obsessed. Yeah. It's just obsession, guys. Yeah, obsession is a good word. I think, <laughs> I think, I think obsession is a key. So, you know, I I went, I started video in 2003 mm-hmm. for my local church. And thank God for my youth pastor, Jeff Moores, because he handed me a Canon HV30 camera with mini DV tapes and Adobe Premiere software. And he said, start making, you know, youth videos for the youth group. There were 16 mm-hmm. kids in the youth group and these things would play Wednesday night and they were terrible. <laughs> um, but that was back in, you know, 2003. And I, I was doing 52 videos a year because youth group happened every Wednesday night. Wow. So YouTube hadn't even started yet, but I was building the, the discipline and the content creation strength of doing a weekly video. Then the senior pastor, 2003, <laughs> then the senior pastor goes, uh, hey, these aren't that bad. You should do these on Sunday. I'm a volunteer. That's a whole nother side of the conversation. <laughs> so like I start now doing a Wednesday night video and a Sunday church news video. That's 104 videos a year. And I did videos for like the stewardship campaign and some other stuff as a volunteer. And when I wasn't just waiting tables at Red Robin and I got married, you know, uh, young. So we're trying to figure that out. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then I'm volunteering at the church. Uh, I, I was uh, studying, I was obsessed and I was trying to find, there was, there was nothing that YouTube had literally not started and there was, it was very hard to get education. I didn't go to film school or anything. So I'm a big believer of on the job tra- training. I think, you know, I, w- I was in an internship. I tried to get mentored, get around people, but to answer the question, I mean, you don't have to take it to that level, but I think that's kind of the level of, I think you can, like you said, you have to be good. Yeah. And I think you can actually have a lot of success if you've been in real estate for one year. But there's just a difference. You know, Alex Ramosi hit this really hard at our conference. He was like, you know, the guys who really typically have the biggest impact and the biggest longevity in the business space have built crazy businesses. Mm -hmm. They've done it. They've got the depth. They've been been in the game a long time. And so it's kind of like how tall the skyscraper is, is how deep the foundation goes. And so... When you fast forward to today, whether it was jumping on planes and red-eye flights to get in the room, to also grow my business acumen. Mm -hmm. I I did a lot of jobs for terrible pay because I just wanted to get in the room. I'd fly to Florida to be at Dr. Dave's Ultimate Life Conference because I was like, I'm here to get the wisdom and to get the crispy photos and to over-deliver for the client and Mm -hmm. to, to learn all of the above. I want to invest in skills. I want to create that depth. And then you look at the rest of the people again on our team. You look at Omar. He, this guy's no joke. He's put in the time. For sure. And, and we've worked together. He's, he's done the shoots and worked with clients and had to meet deadlines and had payments not go through and been punched in the face by, you know, the ups and the downs. And he's put in the time. You look at Nolan and he was doing videos for his church at like eight, you know what I mean? He's like 24 <laughs> now, but so he's like been in the game and he's made creative videos and he's studied the stuff. And, and then Heather's our operations officer. So, so I actually think, yeah, it is interesting. I'm, I've never answered this question before. Like, uh, you know, even Heather as our operations officer, she has real business acumen. She had, she ran social media for Washington state parks, opened up a brick and mortar thing called Piper's playground in Olympia, Washington mm. and got, and got crushed. Like 
<laughs> so, you know, I mean, did well. The best lessons, P- yeah. P and L, like all the different stuff, had some successes, but also had partners backstab yeah. on it, her. She had to carry the weight, you mm-hmm. know, all this kind of stuff. And so, so I think that when when some of credible, uh, when like the fruit is is really good, that's coming out from yeah. something, is because the roots go deep and they've been forged in the fire. Pressure mm-hmm. makes diamonds. You know, you've really been through some stuff. And so I think that people should embrace, I think you can you can have success on the journey, but that's where, absolutely, where do you get good? You just get, get good from not just being in the trenches and practicing, but mm-hmm. also being deliberate about it, being obsessed, being uh, wanting to study, wanting to pursue greatness, yeah. wanting to study your worthy rivals, wanting to really um, pursue mastery intentionally. What does your obsession look like? Personally? Yeah, personally. Like, what is my routine in obsession? Yeah, look like? Obsession, like something that you're obsessed about. And what does it look like? I mean, I think my obsession, I, I thought about it. I'll tell you about yesterday. It's, it's the freshest. Okay. So obsession yesterday was, and I kind of live for this. I also, I had a little fear and intep- trepidation on my schedule yesterday, mm-hmm. but it was my instruction to my personal assistant. We're launching the book, YouTube Secrets. So I had a 6 a.m. interview with Anthony O'Neill because he was at 9 a.m. on the East Coast. Um, and, and we got this baby mm. and my wife likes to go get her coffee at Dutch brothers. Mm. So we schedule the whole morning. So I get up, I put the baby in the front pack. I'm trying to get my, cause I'm trying to have my coffee hit. I got a shower. I got to get ready. I'm going to show up on camera mm. and this is not my typical routine. Your family's traveling with you. Uh, no, we're at home. Okay. This gotcha, is gotcha. Virtual. And so, so she goes and gets her coffee. I jump on with him immediately after I got another one with this office hours live co-author Benji. We do another one. Then I have this Wellspring group. It's like a faith-based uh, mm. mastermind and, and prayer group. Smash that. Erin McManus delivers this rad message. And so, and I'm also like really pumped and it was amazing, but I'm like, this is just not the right time and I got stuff to do. And so, but I'm, I'm committed. So I'm taking notes there. And then, um, and then the day continues to compound. I do another podcast with Levi, but, but I say all that because I mean, people got to work. That's like, mm. that's what I do. But then I, I sit down for lunch. I just go to my backyard. And I turn on YouTube and I start to study very intentionally. Mm. And I, uh, I, I'm studying daily financial news from Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. And I think you got to have self-awareness. God's giving me this mind. I'm like a psycho when it comes to like content and information, I think. Mm. But it's also what keeps me curious. Yeah. You can't even get me interested if I don't care. Yeah. But whether it's about business, leadership, um, operations, you know, finances. And I'm also trying to fill in the gaps for things I don't know. Like, I'm not great at this new era of real estate, bonus depreciation, cost seg. You know, I'm growing into things. Uh, how do you reduce your tax liabilities with a, you know, $10 million company, et cetera? And so I'm, I'm trying to get skilled for the next era. How do you have difficult conversations in the next level of operation? So that, so what I, my biggest problems is what directs my level of study, but my punchline is I'm in the midst of it. Even when I've gone through all the things on lunch, I'm not even watching like clips from the office. Although we did last night, my wife and I, we were going through some of the highlights. We, you know, I'm still like, I'm grinding and I'm mm-hmm. grinding on top of the grind. And then I get back, shoot a few more things. And then I had a web class. Again, typically would have happened on a Monday, but we were flying out here. Yeah. And so I had a web class. And then after that, I, I sat down and this is what is so fresh is now I got my son next to me. We don't usually don't let him have his phone all day, but once it's five, he likes YouTube kids. Mm. And then I've got my <laughs> other one month old uh, on my chest and I'm outside and I'm studying more. And it, what clicked in my mind, which this isn't meant to be judgy of our team or whatever, um, but what clicked in my mind was, I was like, I don't know if our team is, is studying like I am. Mm. And I don't expect them to, by the way. But I was just wondering, I was like, I wonder if people... How do you have so much time to do this? I'm so busy. How do you have time to learn as much as you do or you study as much as you do? Yeah. Well, I, I got my son right here. I got here and I'm, I got 30 minutes while my wife is, yeah. my Megan came into town. And, and, and I guess, you know, your brain could be fried after a day like that or so on and so forth. That was another 30 minutes. Yeah. And I wasn't just eating garbage. I was, I was studying more, learning more, and even kind of unwinding with just more, uh, you know, more content. So that, I think that's what obsession. Man, I thought I was weird for that. Bro. My what, unwind is like, yo, let me just sit here and learn this. Like get this, like I ha- I'll have a question about something. Yeah. Right. And the stress is the fact that I have the question and I don't have the answer. 
And if I ever get a chance to like, if there's ever a moment where my wife and my baby and my daughter aren't in the room, I want the time to learn the thing that I've been stressing about all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's like my decompression. And then I started thinking, am I, is this a sickness? Yeah. It is. It's a gift. Oh, no, it's not a <laughs> it's it a might gift. be a sickness, but, <laughs> but I think it's a good sickness. It's a virus yeah. that'll lead to success. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so, and, and of course, it'll be phone off, you know, focus time with my family, et cetera. Yeah, sure. But then when my wife and kids go to sleep, I a lot of times put on my nose canceling headphones and I'll listen to some more stuff. And, and by the way, you know, I mean, one other thing I'm super passionate about is, is, is that the Bible is mm -hmm. I absolutely love Bible study. Mm -hmm. I think my next era, I want to talk about actually biblical principles of success, Proverbs, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. What does obsession look like? I've probably read Proverbs a thousand times, mm -hmm. more or less a chapter a day. I buy all the commentaries on it. I, I buy, if I get into a subject, I buy every book on the subject. So one of the, <laughs> and, and, and this is the subject I'm most passionate about. So any decent biblical success laws book, I will purchase that book. So there's this book on the unfair advantage because we have the Holy Spirit. There's this book on uh, Daniel Rabbi Lepin's uh, biblical laws of success. There's 25 biblical laws of success. And I'll study when I worked for Dr. Dave, he was kind of doing similar stuff. There's this guy, Bob Harrison, Dr. Dave. I studied everybody in the space. I'd figure out every like, and I would even I'd listen to some, and I, and I wouldn't go through like maybe their entire courses, yeah. but I buy everybody's curriculum. I'd look at everybody's YouTube videos. Yeah. I'd study through everybody's stuff to a degree. I'm just curious who's gone before me. And I'm also, I'm still, I'm coming up on 39 now, but you could, you could go back, you know, 15, 20 years even. And I was that guy. Yeah. I was on eBay buying John Maxwell and Chris Widener communication mm, CDs yeah. and, and, and actually studying it. This, this is funny. All this was, I was thinking about this literally yesterday. I was like, man, people buy courses, but they don't even watch them. Yeah. I was like, that's kind of the secret. It's like you also, <laughs> it's you, you actually, you have to watch the course. Yeah, sure. Even more is the secret is like take out a journal and take notes. Yeah. And as life gets busier, my life's never been as busy as it is now, especially yeah. with the two kids. And so it's harder than it ever has been. So how do you, you got to be obsessed. You yeah. got to have that success virus yeah. and you got to just be like, I just can't, I can't shake it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on lunch is in that, between two right. other things. Is that but, something you can teach? I mean, because I think people want results without that obsession. And I don't think they, they truly understand, especially if you're teaching, unless you have, say you have a crowd of people, you want to teach them the stuff to do. Yeah. But you know for a fact that nothing I teach you is going to work unless you're super upset. And set, unless, like after you clock out from work, right? And this was me. I, 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 had a, uh, I had an internship with a guy and I'm learning business, right? But after I clock out from the internship, I'm still learning. Yeah, like, I did the same thing. You know what I mean? So is that something people, is that something you can teach or is that something that you teach people Like, you really have to have this obsession? Well, I think, I think this really goes back to when we said passion and proficiency and curiosity. I think what people need to find is their, their thing. Yeah. Because if you were to try to say, listen, if you start a sports channel, this probably will offend some of your audience, right? Because you're probably into sports. Dude, I don't know. even, I can't even tell. You're not? I have no idea what's going on in sports. Okay, well, we, we really are the big, we're like, <laughs> we're so nice. When well, people are talking about basketball, I'll wing it. Like, oh yeah. Yeah. It's good. I mean, right. I played sports in high school and stuff and whatnot. Right. You know, I yeah. know that like, uh, you know, you can, uh, in, in basketball, you can score a touchdown and, uh, <laughs> but, but right. I, I listen for like names. I hear Steph Curry. Oh no, he can shoot. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. He's but, a shooter. But so I remember like, if, if you try to say, listen, you can make millions if you just start a sports channel and you're a sports commentator, I would, I would, I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. I would, I would maybe go in one day. I remember even as a freelance videographer and YouTube strategist, I had helped and it was, I was helping a lot of authors and speakers that were in like the faith world pastors. Mm -hmm. Because I was also obsessed with the material. Like I, I wanted to learn and be immersed. I loved editing video. I learned this about Joel Osteen. You know, Joel Osteen was the video editor for his dad. Mm -hmm. And so his dad, and one of the things he learned about being a concise communicator was that his dad would speak 45, 55, like pastors landing the plane, mm -hmm. hour and a half. Like they're just, <laughs> they're never getting there. But, but they started a TV show and the episodes had to be 27 minutes long. So he had to take 45 minutes of his dad and turn it into 27. And he did it for years. Just the meat. It helped him become a better communicator. I am convinced yeah. that one of the things that made me the communicator I am today is video editing. 
and editing speakers. And so constantly studying and good speakers too, like being immersed and being a part of some different churches and working with some different clients. So I'm studying communication. I'm, I'm, and I'm not just listening to when the audience laughed. Yeah. I'm listening to it over and over as I'm doing the edits yeah. and I'm learning all these different nuances. So to that end, I think that you got to find the thing you're curious about. Yeah. And I remember one when Stan Efferding, my friend Caleb Ralston said, hey, can you help him? He, he's a big bodybuilder and he lives in Las mm. Vegas and I'm living in Las Vegas. And I remember we have, he comes over to my house. It was super weird. I have like this little wooden chair in my kitchen. He's like 10 times the size of the chair. I think the chair is going to break. <laughs> and we're sitting there like doing a consult and he's got all the money in the world. Mm. Like, and he wants to, and I remember at first I was like, this is another client. I'll do some stuff for him. And a little bit of time passed. And I said, Hey, Stan, let me just give you your money back. I'm just not going to do this. Yeah. Like, cause I can't even get one. I couldn't even really get my mind wrapping around I could, I could eventually figure out what videos he should make, what titles he should have and stuff, but I just didn't really care. Yeah. So I think things come <laughs> alive and I was like, I, yeah. So I think really things come alive when, what does keep you curious? If you're endlessly fascinated by Harry Potter, or Lord of the Rings or whatever, movies, music, yeah. if you, you just go deep into people's catalogs and all the different stuff, like, like, I don't, I don't think anyone has, but like, why has nobody started a, a a uh, YouTube channel about the Wu-Tang Clan. Mm, that's endless content. Oh, endless. I mean, yeah. not just the original nine members, but I think there's a thousand affiliates globally, at least 500 different like real niche MCs. Yeah, for sure. I think 25 years in it. There's Hulu specials. It, it's just that much content, but like, but somebody have to be passionate about it. For sure. And if they were endlessly curious, then they could monetize that curiosity, monetize that passion. And so I think curiosity, I think the other thing is, when it comes to that determination is you probably do need some kind of a spark. Yeah. But I think people can get there. Yeah. Yo, you said something so clutch. It just made sense. Because one of the hardest things to find in a video editor is somebody who can find the bar, find the, find the video, the part where this is going to be amazing. So to be a communicator themselves. So I, I think that was the, because you find somebody that like can edit videos like looking, but th that's the most frustrating thing in the world because I like, guess you can't like, and why don't you know that this is not good? Mm. You know what I mean? Why don't you know that this is like, no one's going to like want to watch this. You know yeah. what I mean? So I have actually have my, uh, my editor when he come on, I'm like, yo, just give me six clips and I'll probably choose one yeah. or two. Cause that's the hardest thing. But what you're saying is someone being a communicator can find why this is going to resonate with someone because they're a communicator. Yeah. Dang, that makes yeah, sense. communicator, I think a marketer and somebody who understands the audience, which a, mar a good marketer would understand yeah. the audience. The creator who understands the viewer best wins. The and the creator, creator who understand understands the platform best wins. So we just actually hired an outsourced guy who's, who's pretty good. We'll see how good it goes. He works for Graham Stephan as well. He chops mm. up the iced coffee hour. Mm. And he, uh, he's given us 31 TikToks. Uh, and, and specifically TikToks. Now we, oh, can, wow. we own the content so we can use them anywhere. But what I'm noticing is even that it's an art form in and of itself. Yeah. That's Gen Z, man. You yeah. know, I'm an elder millennial and, and I get it too, I think. But the proof is in some of the views and he, he dropped one of these, the hook, like what is the first word said in the piece of content? Even if those are said later, do you move those to the front to give it context? You know, what do you edit out of it? How is there B-roll details on the caption? But he's also, he's speaking to a generation yeah. through what I'm already saying, but he's contextualizing it to TikTok and to the vibe of the room over there. So yeah, that's video I, I editing. I never thought about that. Video editing is not only like big now. And like, I think Hyler Smith or whatever, who has edited for Logan's Paul, just started a whole YouTube channel devoted to video editing. But you want to talk about like, a move. Like that's been a wave. It's going to be a major wave in this next decade and probably never go away. And, and, and the level of nuance of skill set that editors, because it's not just learning the software and being fast at it and maybe even knowing how to make graphics or text or titles, it's storytelling, timing, um, you know, music, music mixing, audio mixing. There's layers of distinctions. And then of course, vertical, horizontal, where's yeah. this going? You know, and uh, and so there's a lot. There's a lot we there. may have discouraged some content creators 
<laughs> this episode, like, oh my gosh, I thought I was just making content. I was hey, just making some ma- videos. This is the mastery episode. Uh, I mean, it's just something to commit to, you yeah. know? I think, again, because, by the way, my whole message too all the time is like, you got to just punch fear in the face, punch perfectionism mm-hmm. in the face and press record. Yep. They go, yeah, yeah but but do 50,000 hours first. <laughs> I mean, it's both and like you can have so much success in the journey, I think by just committing. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, but, but I think, I hope, I hope that this is the kind of stuff though. This is where, you know, iron sharpens iron yeah. is a proverb. And what's funny about that is people are like, Oh, that's so cute. That's not cute. That's pain. Yeah. That's sparks. Mm-hmm. That's friction. I don't want iron sharpening my iron. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> right. that's, I want like pillows, melatonin you know right. I, want to, I want to take a nap right? like, so so it, it's something about just uh, getting into uh the furnace yeah you know and really committing to mastery and just letting it do its work yeah man ads right so i think this is the number one question that people have for chris how do i get ads how do i get sponsorships yeah you have any insight on that I think you should pick a niche. I think uh, either one, get big, and then deals come to you. Yep. But, you know, Heather Torres, she's the host of our podcast, the Think Media Podcast. She has a homeschool channel, and she doesn't really upload there anymore. But, that, again, going back to the fact that I think she's the leading female expert on on YouTube. Why? Well, not just what she's done at Think Media, but she's done it in other niches and done it for clients. Yeah. She just has a lot of depth. So on her homeschool channel, she has about 2,000 subscribers. Key, they're homeschool moms. Yeah. Not 2,000 subscribers of just like weird, random Minecraft clips. And then you uploaded some personal development thoughts. Mm-hmm. And then, but like they're homeschool moms. Yeah. So she and her husband, Isaiah, homeschool their kids. They spend $1,600 a year on curriculum. And hmm. the curriculum they use, she emails the company and it's like, hey, do you guys do any kind of brand sponsorships with YouTube influencers? And they replied and they said, what the heck are you even talking about? Like, was that, that was some <laughs> gibberish, you know, whatever. So, but they said, I don't know. We don't know what you're saying, but it sounds cool. Tell us more. And so they ended up giving her the curriculum for free. Mm-hmm. So she saved $1,600. Mm-hmm. Striking an affiliate deal where they would give her 10% on any sales. That's $160 a sale. Mm-hmm. And she only had 2,000 subscribers. Right. So people are out here thinking, again, that squarespace.com is, you know, you're going to get sponsored at scale like some other podcaster you you watch, which is also great, you know, as you grow. But I think the key there would be create some good content, but for a small group of people, mm-hmm. like a particular group. Because that also, that's why micro-influencers do so well, is if there's a product market match, then that is a good investment for that company because they're talking to a very yeah. to 2000 homeschool moms as opposed sure. to broad marketing on the Joe Rogan show that's a lot of different people although i i'd argue even that could be niche you know yeah. you maybe have some like liver supplements or something like that yeah. probably really slap for his audience you know? <laughs> ufc clothing or whatever you right. you do have different but but like rather than broad huge audience find something small find something niche and then you can attract brand deals uh, without having to be that big yeah, uh, my man Joe right there, I think he did something genius. And I don't think he knows what he did or what he's doing. No disrespect. But so he has this thing. It's going to sound odd, but you got to see it. It's really, really cool. So he did a video in a pool with his man breasts out, right? Yeah. And he's like talking like, yo, I'm confident. Yeah. So even I'm not that confident because I just don't. I got a whole dad bod. It's not, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, so now it's crazy. Like it, it like went, it like went, and people was loving it. And now he just goes around like flashing his middies. It's crazy. Yeah. He was yeah, in, yeah, that's amazing. You know, he's in New Orleans, like flashing his middies for beads. It's crazy. But I, I don't know if he understands, and maybe you do, but the niche market of people who are so not confident and they wish they could do that. Yeah, they wish they could like even have the the. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? What's the word I'm looking for? The, um, what's the word? Uh, courage. Yes. The courage, the confidence to walk anywhere, to show anybody what's underneath their shirt, right? And I think when you start talking about niches, it automatically peaked. Like that needs to be, that'd be a niche of people that yeah. I can help that y- you can't really change your body like that, especially right. people that lived with it for a while. Mm. But good, good niche. Good, good yeah, I, think, I mean, to me, I, I, was, I would niche down to men. 
Yeah. And, and 100%, I mean, confidence is, uh, like that also, if you're tapping into universal human needs, yeah, that's, that's a good niche to be in broad appeal, but niche there's yeah. a, and there's a big men's movement right now. Um, there maybe has been, but Joe Rogan kind of taps into that. Uh, liver King is kind of probably goes more towards men. Andrew Tate, you know, very controversial, but like really rallying men. Yeah. Um, yeah. My friend Ruslan, like he's kind of got a passion and, and the, the long tail of, be- so to, to that end though, I think that you get clear that maybe you're like, you go, okay, men of a certain age that are not fully in their chiseled, you know, uh, future yet, um, that are, uh, and then you can get, you know, that are maybe insecure that are, uh, that, and then you can list out their problem, like, like struggle talking to the opposite sex struggle to, um, uh, you know, in job interviews, struggle. And those are kind of topics. Yeah. You know, in marketing, they talk about talking to an avatar and sometimes naming that individual. Sure. So you're like, okay, I know that this is the person. He's he's 19 and yeah. he's had trouble fitting in in high school. And he's, uh, you know, now trying to make it in job or college. And um, and so then you when you know who you're talking, everything yeah. becomes real clear yeah. to a point when you kind of know where you're talking to. And so I love that you said niche. Sometimes you can say niche is homeschool. But niche could also be the individual. Yeah. Like in and of itself. Like I want to help. When people say I want to do lifestyle and I want to do, I just want to talk about everything. I say, well, okay. The problem if you talk about everything is if you also talk to everyone. But if you talk about everything, if you say, you know, I want to help, uh, you know, young uh, Gen Z career women figure life out. That is a niche. 100%. Because now it's like, I'm going to help them with finances. I'm going to help them with job interviews. Yeah. I'm going to help them with dating. I'm going to help them. Be, but that's clear because you the niche is also the person that you're you're helping. And, yeah. and I don't think, people might say that's too broad. If you're helping move, we like to teach this in all kinds of education. Where is the person that you're trying to help today? And where is their ideal dream state? What are their problems and ambitions today? So what are the problems? What's keeping them from where they want to go? So for us, our uh, person that either hasn't started a channel or they're stuck and they're not growing. So what are the problems? Trying to figure out YouTube tips, trying to figure out the titles, the thumbnails, how to show up on camera, a million things we can talk yeah. about. What's the ideal dream state? Um, and uh, 100,000 subscribers, silver play button, full-time income, et cetera. Well, then that gives us kind of our customer journey, our content journey that could start with free content. You could get the book if you want. You could join our course if you want so many different ways. And we want to move people from here to there. Yeah. And so if you can move guys and, and really be articulate, you're like, and, and, and you're adding results. Your content is valuable. When I listen to that, anyone who's winning, their content is valuable. Yeah. A lot of people hate on Andrew Tate. Uh, it's, it's clearly valuable content <laughs> that's resonating. And uh, Peterson is the, Jordan Peterson too. Yeah. Also controversial. Yeah. They made a movie. There's a, all this drama about it. They say he only talks to like incels. I had to look the term up. He uh, he's talking. <laughs> yeah, what about, is incel? He's it's like disenfranchised young men, mm. um, and and he he really heavily speaks to men. You know, if there's this is well, just, Kevin Samuels. Uh, you know, he, he just passed away, but he had a very specific conversation, like for women, and the way he did it. Love him, hate him. You still like you, a lot of people still know his name. You yeah. know what I mean? Yep. That's really dope. Man. Yeah, yeah. So, so if you can help get people results, where mm-hmm. are they today? Where are you taking them? That's why they're also subscribing. And maybe there's some humor on the way. There's relationship and comedy on the way. But like the get times the guests you come bring on, you're there to serve and bring people from here to there. Man, is your wife an entrepreneur? Uh, I don't think I would say she's an entrepreneur like through and through, but together we've, we've adapted. She's our CFO. Gotcha. Right. Um, she loves what we're doing. She's the co-owner of our business. Um, I'm definitely the driver and, uh, she has grown into, I mean, she's a killer person yeah. in our business, but she lets, I would be the visionary founder mentality, you gotcha. know, whatever. And she was, and she's ride or die. So, I mean, yeah. she's like, let's go. So, for sure, for so sure. I think, so a team, uh, team entrepreneur to that, yeah. you know, 
linking up, we make a really great team and she's unreal. She's amazing. Good. I want to know if you, like your perspective uh, on why these platforms are giving these creators so much money, right? So why would, why would Spotify give Joe Rogan a hundred million or why they give call her daddy Alice Cooper? Why did they give her 60 million? Kim Kardashian was starting a podcast. Did she? Yeah. Just heard that announcement. I don't know the money. Rick Ross just got a deal. Wow. This is like before they even start, obviously, because they got names. Yeah. And well, he, he announced it already. But I, I think, but this, we're, we're in a battle for market share. But that much money, $100 Game million. Game of Thrones. But I'm saying, let's say $100 million. He gave Joe Rogan $100 million to be exclusively on Spotify. Yeah. Where, are they trying to get money off of that? Are they trying to make, make their money back? Or obviously you want to make their money back, but how? It's speculation for me, but, uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes the way these companies are being ran is they're being ran. I got a friend who's the, uh, founder, one of the founders of pray.com. Mm -hmm. It's like a $300 million company, uh, been, you know, with 10 million paying users, 40 million, uh, uh users, free users total. Um, software as a service, you know, and these, these types, Spotify is similar yeah. You know, I'm a Spotify premium pay payer. I don't think there's a way for Spotify to get more money from me. It's about users, period. You know what I mean? It's about total users, churn, how many users can they keep? And, and this is the streaming wars is the same thing. Netflix, Peacock, like, and you're not only in Hulu, but not only do people cut the cord on cable, but they're going to cut the cord on Netflix. If, if the catalog yeah. and it's, uh, I'm so confused, man. I, I pay more money. My 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 streaming service bill is bigger than my mortgage. I mean, like, because <laughs> we not we we sign up for like Showtime one time to watch like Super Pumped about Uber, and I like just never cancel. Right, so, <laughs> right. Like, today, I am a part of 58 streaming services. And Goodness it gracious, ten thousand dollars a month. I don't know. I don't. Know. <laughs> but uh, but but all this. But but what is that? It's content. Mm -hmm. They're trying to lock down exclusive content for attention for users to to be committed and to listen to the platform. If you love Joe Rogan, either one, they get ads, they get to pump you ads, True. or two, um, you become premium so that you don't have to listen to ads and you can listen to all of his content on the platform. And and then, but all the way back to what I learned from Pray.com is he was like, man, when you're in these companies that are like venture backed, it's a different, different world than a bootstrap company. Mm -hmm. And what you're trying to do is pump, you're, you're taking multiple rounds of funding, you're trying to pump the top line users. All these software companies, their EBITDA, which is like, you know, your net income earnings after taxes or whatever, you know, um, is a, a traditional company in like industrial niche would be worth two to three EBITDA. Mm -hmm. So if you made like a million net income a year or whatever, you could somebody buy the company for three million. Mm -hmm. These software companies are getting like 10, 20, yeah. 50, mm -hmm. 75. And so, and the people who start them, they're trying to go to IPO. Now, I think Spotify is already public. I'm mm -hmm. sure they need profit and different things, but I'm not, I actually am just lobbing out a lot of information that yeah, for sure. know, my understanding of it. That's why though, I think. Right. It's not like us. We get a book, we pay $3 for it, sell it for $20, $17. Yeah. We're in the money, but they're thinking we'll dump a hundred million for notoriety brand we bring in a certain group yeah. of people and then it's like a 20x or something like it's that. it's game of thrones at a whole nother level yeah and it, and and I, i'm sure it's got an roi but in some cases it doesn't roi in the same way we think yeah it's it's who else can they attract maybe to the platform from that because twitch is doing the same thing twitch is trying to get people game streamers exclusive and they lose their contracts and they move to youtube and so yeah, it's, it's trying to get talent signed and and they're also trying to play probably a bigger game of what does monetization look like in the future and mm -hmm. all this kind of stuff. So, yeah. I do got to ask you too, you had some amazing speakers at your event. I mean, just people that I, one, I didn't know who they were, but now I'm in love with them. Yeah. Uh, Alex Ramosi. Yes. I didn't know who it was, right? I'd be in my like own little... Some like like my own black world. Yeah, you know? I, mean, I only really know a whole bunch of black people. But Alex Hermosi, amazing, right? Uh, uh, Patrick Bet David is just yeah, he's a monster. Yes. it's crazy. And um 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 oh, what's her name? What's her name? She's amazing. Oh, what's her name? Vanessa Lau. Vanessa. Yeah, she killed it. Yeah, 
Yeah. Um, and then you got Gary Vee, right? Yeah. Did, did you have relationships with all these people beforehand? Um, it was mostly relationships. Gary, I was on kind of Gary's radar. Gary shouted out YouTube secrets. Really? Yeah. Benji visited his office and Gary's like, buy the book. I mean it. And he had his whole staff read it too. Oh, wow. His, his YouTube team. My kid, my friend Caleb worked for him at the time. So uh, still, we had to pay Gary's keynote fee. Of course, yeah. you can negotiate, but we just paid sure. full fee. Um, and that was also a strategic move because Gary attracts other speakers. Yeah, sure. And and even speakers that are my friends would be like, yeah, I might be busy. I was like, yeah, we all have Gary B. And I'm coming. That's what Vanessa uh -oh. said. She literally, she goes, I was like, hey, so we've locked in Gary B. Here's the dates. She said she didn't even look at her calendar. She just replied to the email. Yes. Oh, wow. So she didn't look at terms or anything else. And we knew that Gary had that effect. And so, uh, um, you know, Alex and Patrick, uh, PBD was, uh, a, a reach out from a, a friend of mine that just reached out to his team. And again, he was the other speaker that we paid. Yeah. And then that same individual, um, who r ran an agency in Las Vegas was working with Alex and Layla. So that was crazy because they also at the time spoke for free. I can't say that that's what they do in the future. Their brand is getting that out Alex, of Alex, goodness gracious. Um, and, and it was, and that one was also convenient though because Patrick only does like four of these things a year. Yeah. And so, it, and it's, he doesn't need the money. Yeah, for sure. Like he's got, <laughs> he's got big businesses and he sold his yeah. insurance company, which was like 30,000 employees or people were, you know, so it was much more, uh, I did invest with Patrick. Let me speak to these connections. I, I did his one day business plan. Like you create a business plan in a mm. day for the next year and a couple of years. Oh, really? And I paid the VIP level and I asked him a question at the end and he keeps telling people about the question. He just shouted me out at the vault. He just thought the question was cool and what the way it progressed. We talked for about 15 minutes. So he, and then he, at that point now, he was more aware of think media and he had- What was the question? You're not going to- you can't glaze over that. Well, I need to know the question. The question was, how do we scale to 10 million from like six? And he said, you know, he always says solving for X. What are we solving for? That was the most fascinating no, question. But, but there. here's where it progressed was this is what he found interesting was he said, well, let me ask you this because he asked me about my life, time, season, all this different stuff. He said, if you could get to 15 million in one or two years, but you had to work 60 hours a week, would you do it? I go, no, zero hesitation. Mm -hmm. He goes, if you could get to 10 million in four years, but you could work 20 hours a week, would you do it? I said, yeah, that'd be the path I take. And what actually shocked him, because I don't know, it's, it, was, it was my chemistry of ambition. Mm -hmm. And in hindsight though, I also don't wanna work 20. I just don't, I want to work full time. I want, I like, I, I, I think about like dumb and dumber, you know, where they're like, there's just no jobs in this town. <laughs> yeah. Unless you want to work 40 hours a week. Dude, I think 40 <laughs> hours is a joke. Right. 40 hours is like, bro, I'm on vacation at right. 40 hours. Yeah. I'll push 45. But I also, family is a value. Yeah. My health is a value. So, so it was, we still got to the same destination in the question. Yeah. It was. I'm not going to go into burn the freaking candle at both ends mode, hyper growth, 60. When at the time, because I also started, I said, okay, you have valuetainment. You have 30,000 agents at, at PHP. These two massive companies. How are you doing it? And he goes, I'm the CEO of both. I work 40 at both. Mm. And I was like, Oh, okay. I guess that makes sense. I go, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I just, yeah, I mean, I just, if I did a full-time CEO right, job right. and another one and just add them together and that's how you're a full-time CEO of two companies, like just do the math. And I was like, oh, okay. So I <laughs> work 40 of both. Yeah. So, so yeah. I was like, all right. And so anyways, he, and the way it processed and this played out was he just goes, he's like, I don't know if I've ever met, I, I don't want to embellish too much, but I think that's what he said. He goes, I, I don't know if I've ever met someone more like confident and self-aware and like assured of the decision that they're making and why they're making it. And that's not playing the comparison game or chasing someone else or just trying to hit a number or chase growth for growth's sake or racing to the guy next to him. He's like, you're just really centered in self-awareness of, I know what I want to do in terms of my company, but I also know what my values are in terms of my family. Mm. So that all, the way that played out, I think is what he brings up in the self-awareness piece. Yeah. Because it's not just how do I scale? He's saying, well, what are the other nuances around it? 
And like one way you could scale is work 60 to 80 hours and whatever. Or also, are you okay if the time horizon is a little bit longer? But anyways, PBD, you know, he, uh, that helped That's because right. I was on his radar yeah. and he liked my vibe. And then we still paid him and he did negotiate a little bit with us. Um, and then, but, but I'm very proud of the speaker lineup. Oh, it was amazing. Because it you were was, only missing one person, bro. The chance. I would have done a really, really good job. That's right. That's right. <laughs> For the next one, I know we've been talking to it might be on hiatus, but we got I'm in there, baby. Yeah. But uh, but uh, I think I mean I, I'm obsessed with curating a very particular type of speaker. Yeah. I wanted it to be a good speaker with real depth, with real chops. They'd gone through my wisdom test filter mm. of their real practitioners. They'd really executed. They'd bun- they'd brought something unique. And the combination of speakers that there was just kind of no misses, that they yeah. all had real substance. We've kind of all been there. And yeah. you, you have a level of forgiveness where you're like, yeah, the speakers were hit or miss. <laughs> There's some really good ones. That last one, like, was it wasn't. And not only that, curating what they talked about. Yeah. Like, I guess as a consumer myself, as a connoisseur of business strategy, like even Alex, like at first, because we were working the event planner, they're yeah. like, yes, they, they had it listed down, speak on $100 million offers which is his book and is his main message. And I was like, I don't want him to speak on that. It's a video conference. Look at his YouTube channel. It's blown up. <laughs> and I was also kind of nervous because I was like, he's speaking for free. Do I have the, can I ask him to do it? <laughs> right. You know? The unmitigated goal. Like, I, I can't. I mean, that's it. He could just whip that talk out. Yeah. Same thing for PBD. PBD made a custom talk mm-hmm. just for that room, for that environment, yeah. based on the detailed information I gave him about mm-hmm. what he should talk about. Same thing with Alex. We're DMing on Instagram mm-hmm. and I go, hey, I know you're listed for $100 million offers. I know you're busy. I know you're also not getting paid. I know right, you're right. bringing some weight to this conference. So here, here's my demands. You know, yeah. like, uh, could you actually speak on, you know, how you grew your social from like zero to yeah. whatever it is in such a short time in your content strategy? And even as he talked about it, he's like, so Sean told me to speak on something. I don't think I have any authority on. He's like, take it or leave it. He's like, here's what I did one time. I I don't know if it'll be repeatable or if it'll work for you. That was like his opening. But but it was an amazing talk because uh, literally everyone, I wanted to DJ what they talked about. Mm. So it was an obsession with the attendee experience to bring the best of the best, to curate who it was, to curate the flow of information and trying to truly have the greatest grow with video conference, you know, ever. You did it very well. Look, man, we got we got to wrap up, man. Normally these uh, conversations are an hour. We're like 90 minutes in. So <laughs> this was like, this is re- deep. oh my gosh, I, my favorite topic though. Goodness gracious. Oh, also, so I took your, I took your program, your Grow With YouTube, YouTube Growth. Yeah, it's our YouTube boot camp. I don't even know the name of it. I was like, yo, here, just take the money. And it helped grow my channel. Um, I would definitely like for you to offer it here and we'll have a link for them, right? Yeah. But can my friends get a discount? Yeah, absolutely. Like okay. we 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 cool. uh we can just put it in the show notes and we'll figure okay. out all those details. Social proof. But this, is social proof. This is gonna be uh it's a 60 day boot camp, mm. right? And so um if you're serious about starting a YouTube channel, growing a YouTube channel, um, and you want more hands-on, like you want you have me, my team, we do channel reviews mm-hmm. in there, you know, and um, and real Nikki study. did her channel review and she said it was amazing. Yeah. You just did Nikki's and yeah. she was like, yo, it was, it just changed the game for me. Yeah. So really give you tactics, yeah, really for sure. break it down. And then, I mean, you have also like our included in it is our video creation made simple workshop with, uh, Omar and other people on the team. So we're talking about like, uh, Hey, what camera, how can you look best on camera? Right. How should you use the gear you already have? What gear? So kind of just we will, it's, you know, we have some, like the book is do it yourself, read the book. This is done with you. So we're going to kind of walk with you through a six week or roughly 60 days. There's an implementation day where we get your whole plan out basically in one day virtually. And then, uh, and then we help you execute on that plan. So not only do you have the promises that by the end of it, you've posted five videos. And even if you've already posted videos, like five think media style videos, like five videos, but Deeper than that, you've learned the skill set so you can repeat that process off into the moon. And it's been crazy to see the results people are getting 100%. and stuff. So yeah, check out the show notes. It's called the YouTube Bootcamp and cool. uh, we definitely hook up a, a discount for cool. social proof. We'll have a it. link. 
type in the code social proof, man, and I uh, get you some love. I I am this is a, a a real no flat no no fluff no cap uh, testimonial. It literally helped accelerate my channel, and uh, I'm so thankful, so so thankful for it. So um, I got I got to do a quick commercial, and then I'm gonna have you like close us out with a word of wisdom. So mm. just be prepared. Uh, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. TheMorningMeetup.com is the only organization that gathers every single day uh, for the betterment of entrepreneurs. We definitely got to get Sean on The Morning Meetup. Did you know we we link up every morning at 8 a.m.? Every single morning, Monday through Friday, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I don't know how you get up it's amazing. in Vegas. But uh, we have hundreds of people on a call every single morning. And... Uh, we have like a meetup once or twice a year that uh, they don't have to pay anything for it. They just come. I get the venue. We start talking. We connect with each other. Uh, and it's just an amazing experience. So go to themorningmeetup.com, join the book club. And uh, yeah, join us. $79 a month. Or don't even do the $79 a month. Just do the $399 for the whole year. And I'll talk to you every single weekday for a year. I'm on the call every day because I love it. And I'm obsessed with entrepreneurship. Okay. Sean, thank you so much, man. Yeah, I appreciate you. Thanks for having me on. This is an amazing conversation. Yeah, I had fun. Yeah, good, man. Let everybody know um, how they can, like, follow you and support what you're doing. Um, And then you got to close this out with a word of wisdom for that creator that's out there. Like, I got something to say, man, but Mm. I just haven't started. So Mm. you can close this out. Yeah, so uh, Sean Cannell rhymes with YouTube channel. And uh, you can find me on all the social media platforms there. Think Media is our main channel. And YouTube Secrets is out now. I really think if you want to check the book out, uh, people would enjoy that. Um, as far as uh, a, a word of wisdom, uh, you know, what comes to mind is actually Ecclesiastes 1010. Mm-hmm. Using a dull blade requires great strength. So sharpen the blade. That's the value of wisdom. Mm-hmm. It helps you succeed. You know, I think that, uh, you know, President Abraham Lincoln stole that quote. And he said, if I have eight hours to chop down a tree, I would spend six hours sharpening the ax. Yeah. So I think, you know, when it comes to this creator economy, when it comes to, um, you know, getting going, spend time investing in wisdom. And if anything, that's subscribed to this podcast. You know, you got to keep sharpening the blade. Using a dull blade, it's hard. Uh, you got to get smarter. You got to mm-hmm. get more intelligent. So don't hesitate to invest yourself. The best investment I've ever made is investing in myself investing in wisdom, um, sharpening that blade. And I've found that I've been more effective um, for every goal and target that I've set. I love it, man. Listen, we can't close it out no better than that. Make sure you do yourself a favor, okay? Join the YouTube bootcamp. There's a link below. Use the code social proof. Uh, we'll get some money off. I don't know how much, but it'll take something off. And uh, make sure you go get you some social proof, okay? Meaning go build something. Remember how you build it. Document the journey, but then you got to come back to your community and teach somebody else how you did the thing that you did. All right, we are out of here. Peace. <laughs>